Hi there, I'm Marissa Pendlebury and welcome back to the Nourishing Roots channel where I show you how to develop lifelong positive relationships with food, mind and body using my own personal experiences and expertise in overcoming an eating disorder. Now in this week's video I've got some very exciting news to share with you at the end but first and foremost I'm going to be delving deep into the topic of how to not only gain weight in recovery but also how to reclaim your life in recovery or after an eating disorder. Now interestingly to mention whether you suffer from anorexia or bulimia or any other form of eating disorder a lot of professional support can focus on the element of gaining weight or becoming healthier or having some physical marker to put in front of someone to say that you're healthy now and I'm by no means dismissing that that is so important and gaining weight for lots of people and myself included with a vital component to recovery but what happens after you've gained a healthy amount of weight and often the case is is that sometimes people feel a massive big black hole or void in their lives and this sense that nothing's there to replace what their eating disorder filled. And this is definitely the case with me and, and so many others that I work with, is that because the eating disorder takes up so much headspace, so much room in our lives with the rituals, the routines, the calorie counting, the structure, just in the way that it just engulfs absolutely everything, that when you might get to a healthy weight, or even some of these behaviours begin to fall away, is that what is left behind and that what is left behind is really really important to address because often people can be left in a healthy body feeling really helpless alone and not knowing what their identity is and I can guarantee whatever form of eating disorder you may have suffered from is that it has developed a whole identity based on things that you might not have actually been genuinely interested in so for example, you might have been really interested in why you suffer from an eating disorder, cookery, food preparation, veganism, vegetarianism, all other sorts of food related things. And that's not to say that things like veganism and vegetarianism is wrong per se, but I'm guessing that you've developed a lot of interest that kind of centre around a disordered eating way of living. So when you recover, physically and also a little bit mentally too, Sometimes there's this massive fear, like who am I without this eating disorder? And for myself, when I got to a healthy way, I didn't really feel recovered because part of me felt like all these emotions were hitting me like a lorry in the face. And I didn't still know how to cope with reality. I didn't know who I was anymore. A lot of hobbies that I used to have had given up years ago because the eating disorder came in to fill those gaps. And for so long, I had this absolute mental meltdown, that's the only way I can describe it really, an absolute mental meltdown of wondering what I'm meant to do now. So another example is how lots of us can become quite obsessed with work and perfectionism during recovery or even in the depths of an eating disorder. So when we recover, a lot of our time can be spent wondering, you know, am I still meant to be this perfect person? Um, for me, I realised a lot of things that I did at university and came out with and studied, even though I was interested in them, it wasn't the career path I wanted to continue going down. And that was extremely frightening. And for me, reclaiming my life in recovery hasn't just centred on gaining weight at all. Yes, that was part of it, but I almost had to reinvent Marissa again. And I, I, I often tell people that recovery is almost like a rebirthing process. And I know that sounds really weird and graphic, but all I mean by that is that it's about uncovering who we are underneath the layers of the eating disorder. And I touched upon this in, in the last video that I created, but I'm emphasising it here because before I actually talk about how you can gain life and reclaim your life in recovery, it's important to know that when the eating disorder leaves or starts to move closer to the door, it's important to know that that's going to provide a lot of room and for a lot of people that room and that space can be scary and you might not know what to fill it with. So in this next part of the video I'm going to cover with what you can do to combat that. So when I was going about reclaiming life, what I needed to understand was what that actually meant to me. So reclaiming my life was understanding that I didn't want to revolve my life around the rigid routines of when I would specifically have meal and snack times. I didn't want to revolve my life around 
eating perfect or clean or really, really healthy. I didn't want to be working till 2am in the morning just, you know, pumping out essays and pumping out research papers, which I, that was what I used to do in my other job. And I just realised that there was so much left of Marissa to find out about and I became more excited about that, but I knew it might take a few years, um, you know, for me luckily it was a few months to a year to find out the things that I really enjoyed again. But it's all about a process of experimentation. So for me, um, I'm googling by the way, <laughs> so I found out that, you know, when I was like 10 years younger, um, I really, 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 really enjoyed being creative. Now, whether that was simply painting or drawing or colouring in, I absolutely used to love that. I used to love reading. I used to love volunteering. I used to love, like, watching movies and just sitting down for the sake of it. I used to love doing cross-stitching. And, you know, some of those things I'm not that passionate about now. But I realised there was a whole other person to Marissa before the eating disorder existed. And I'm not saying you have to know who you were before your eating disorder existed, but what I am saying is that you have an unlimited potential to find out about yourself and your interests and the things that actually fill you up inside. And that can be scary to understand or scary to go out there and research. But let me tell you now, it's such a vital part of recovery. And recovery, although it is important to understand the steps of breaking away from rigid routines, it's important to start to fill that empty space of the things you love and genuinely enjoy. And allow yourself to understand that you just being you sat right here, right now, just watching this video or any other video on YouTube or even a film, you are still a worthy and lovable person right now. And that's really hard to get your head around and it was really hard for me to understand that I could just be this person um, without my eating disorder. I felt like I'd be a nobody and that the things that my eating disorder gave me, like the control and the motivation to do things really perfectionistically, I felt like without that I wouldn't be anything. So an important tool to give yourself is the permission and the unconditional permission to just go on your own journey to exploring who you really are. Now, a lot of things that in about reclaiming life and recovery might not, not just be about hobbies and interests. It could be about the people you surround yourself by or the people you choose not to surround yourself by. And that might inv be involving unfollowing toxic people on social media or, or unfollowing people who make you negatively self-compare yourself with others because that is a toxic recipe for disaster. And I know for me, I used to follow so many what I thought were inspiring people, and they are in their own right, but I'd often scroll through Instagram thinking, I should be doing this now, I should look like that, I should be that type of person. And really, although, you know, it's good to aspire, it's good to have motivation, but I was always aspiring to be someone else. And as the years have gone on, I've realised that the things that I'm genuinely interested in, like quite personally, aren't the things I thought I was interested in. Like those are so kind of, I have to say, surreptitiously eating disorder related. So I used to follow a lot of fitness accounts, a lot of vegan accounts, a lot of healthy eating accounts. And in a way it was just fueling my obsession around food and perfectionism. Where now I love to follow things like accounts that are more creative around modern calligraphy, which is a hobby I've found that I absolutely love. Um, I know it sounds a bit woo-woo, but I, I love things that are around crystals and holistic well-being and yoga. And these have all made part of the jigsaw puzzle of my own personal recovery. And your jigsaw puzzle pieces might be completely different to mine, and that is 110% okay. I expect you to be completely unique and completely unique to anyone you ever follow on Instagram, because your mission in life isn't to become someone you currently see in your life, but to just be the reflection of your heart's desires. And unfortunately, when you suffer from an eating disorder, all your heart's desires get put in the bin because all the things that you can think about are food, exercise, obsession, um, ticking off checklists, and life just goes out the window. I can quite honestly say through my own process of exploration and just kind of diverting my interests away from food and even cooking, even though I like cooking, just actually finding other hobbies. I found that, you know, you know, I've got a lot 
of myself to be proud of. And it sounds like really weird saying this on camera that I'm proud of myself, but I think we all have to deep down be proud of ourselves because just to get up to this point, to even be watching a recovery orientated video on YouTube shows that you're committed somewhere in your heart to your own recovery. And that is gonna look completely different to mine. And even like watching what I eat in a day videos, that might not really help you to get where you are because although it might help you to you know, understand what's a healthy portion to eat and how to gain weight and how to accept your body, that is just a small percentage about what recovery really is. So in this video, I kind of want to encourage you to, right, this week, go out and explore on Google different things in your area, whether it's volunteering, creative classes, things that might make you have a little smile inside, or things that just genuinely intrigue you. You know, you can go like naked life during for all I care, but as long as you're doing something different away from food and exercise, then allow those things to kind of engulf your life a little bit more and stop trying to just fill your empty eating disorder gap with an obsession around still food and exercise because even if you're a healthy weight, that is definitely not what to do in recovery because you'll still end up with rigid routines and rituals that still in some way centre around control. So finally, before I wrap up this video, I have some very, very exciting news to share. So based on my own personal experiences of recovery, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Nourishing Roots. But although that delved into my own personal experiences of recovery, I don't really think it dug deep enough in terms of actually giving someone a step-by-step -step toolkit that they could use to not only gain weight, but also reclaim their life. And that is how my new book has been born, um, which has kind of been the culmination of the last year or so of just sitting in cafes and drinking endless amounts of coffee and tea and cake and biscuits and all sorts. But I've really put my heart and soul into developing something for you guys that can help you understand things such as meal planning and preparing how to go out to cafes and restaurants and do all the practical side of recovery, including steps of how to maybe get your period back and all the physical elements of things like meal planning and structures. But away from that, and most importantly, it talks more about the structures that you can integrate into your life in order to reclaim it back and take on a whole new identity of your own. So if you're interested, I'm gonna put the camera onto the book now, which looks like this to begin with. And this is a big doc off document at the minute, but I have it as an ebook currently, and it's currently in the process of being published into a physical copy. So fingers crossed that will be available for you soon. But I do have ebook versions now that you can get from something called eLearning Marketplace and Lulu Books. So I'll post a link for that below. But if you want a sneaky peek inside the book and what topics it covers about reclaiming life, I'm going to do that right now for you. So I'm going to introduce you to this book right now. So here's the front cover. And then there's a, a little section about myself and the journey and why I wrote this book. And it's also kind of intermittently dispersed with little quotes that you can use in your own recovery. But importantly, we've got whole sections on, you know, your own questions and recovery and weight gain. Um, and then the main book kind of centres on how you can prepare for weight gain, motivations to recovery, noticing the habits that are keeping you stuck, a whole big section on fair foods and how to overcome them, as well as, you know, the practical side of meal planning, breaking free from obsessive calorie counting and weighing food, some meal ideas based on the things that I like and other people I work with have found really helpful in their own recovery. Um, again, centering on the practical elements, we've got portions and serving sizes, which are kind of just a guide and you can kind of swing all around and about that because we don't want anything specific and rigid in recovery. We've also got additional questions about meal planning, how and where to plan meals, and this also covers things like going shopping, going out for fair foods in cafes and restaurants. And the next we've got other sections on how to conquer strange eating habits, as well as how to hand over control. And here's a controversial topic, is combining exercise with recovery. And that is a really debatable topic and something that I cover very in depth in this book. Um, and then next, importantly, is how to take time for relaxation. 
and then we'll go into a whole other section on how you can use effective coping tools in recovery, such as coping with refeeding, triggering situations and the urge to restrict. We've also got distraction tools before, during and after eating, which I found personally invaluable to my own recovery. And now here is a section that's more centered on how to reclaim life. So we're gonna look at overworking and taking time for self-care, how to deal with the bombardment of emotional experiences that we can get in recovery, how to emotionally break ties with the eating disorder. This is so, so important. Harnessing a good support network and aligning recovery with weight gain and weight gain with important areas of your life, which is understanding how it might fit in with education or work or other commitments. And then we also have a nice little thing at the end, which is all positive messages from the heart to the mind. So these are quotes that I've created and little toolkits to help you just understand where you're at in your own recovery and how to keep going. And then there is a nice final word at the end to help you on your way. But, I mean, this is a bit of a thick book, guys. I mean, it took me a long time. But I was going to show you at the end. If I can find it. I mean, I designed it myself as well. It took me, oh my God, like all year to design this thing. But it has a big section at the end where you've also got lots of space, like four weeks of space to fill in your own meal diaries and activities, habits. So not only things around food, we can also look at your own fear foods. And it's a bit of a step-by-step -step toolkit to really get to grips with your own recovery and start to reclaim your life back because that is the most important thing. Well, thanks so much for letting me share that with you. I'm really, really excited to kind of go through some of the topics that I cover because it's something I've kept a bit of a secret for a while, but I'm really excited to finally share all the hard work and all the kind of heartfelt information I've jam-packed into this manual and workbook. Now, I will warn you, it's quite thick, but in a good sense, it will give you so much value for money. And I know for a lot of people out there, like sometimes coaching, what I do isn't financially accessible for a lot of people. Um, so this is another other great gateway into reclaiming your life back, recovering from your eating disorder and giving you that another big essence of hope because I think most importantly that's what we all need is a little bit more hope that recovery is fully possible. Now this book is going to be available in a link that I'll post down in the comments below and, and the description. But, you know, if you've got any thoughts on it or any of your own ideas on future videos that I can cover, that would be brilliant. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to thank you so much for giving me the inspiration to even keep going with Nourishing Roots and to continue writing, continue fulfilling my heart's passion. Because honestly, without you guys and having people watching and having people giving encouragement, I don't think I would have had the motivation to keep going. And you know what, this work is so fulfilling and it's helped so much to fill that void of what the eating disorder used to hold on me and just help me to recover for good. So again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you soon. Bye.